Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's State by State. The state for this week is Colorado. Colorado was admitted to the Union on August 1st, 1876. It was the 38th state, and because it was brought in on 1876, it has the nickname of the Centennial State. The capital is Denver. As you can see from our lovely little drawing of the state here, Colorado is a mostly squarish or rectangular shaped state. The total area of it is roughly 104,000 square miles. This is the Colorado flag. It was adopted March 31st, 1964. And when I say adopted on that date, the current version of the flag was adopted on that date. It has gone through uh, a couple of revisions. The flag shown here is the current flag for Colorado. The highest elevation point in Colorado is Mount Elbert. It is 14,440 feet high. However, there are over 58 mountain peaks that exceed 14,000 feet in Colorado. That's the most of any state. They are known as 14ers locally. The state mammal of Colorado is the Rocky Mountain Bighorn Sheep, Ovis canadensis canadensis. Bighorn sheep are named for the uh, large curved horns that the males have. Use also use that's the females also have horns, but they are much shorter and with less curving. They range in color from light brown to grayish or dark chocolate brown with a white rump and linings and lining on uh, the backs of all four legs. Males typically weigh 128 to 315 pounds and are 35 to 41 inches at the shoulder and anywhere from 63 to 73 inches long from the nose to the tail. The females are a bit smaller. Uh, typically weighing 75 to 201 pounds or uh, being 30 to 35 inches tall and being 50 to 62 inches long from nose to tail tip. Male bighorn sheep have some impressive adaptations that allow them to take uh, very hard hits, which they take from other bighorn sheep during the mating season. The state bird of Colorado is the lark bunting, Calamos Pisa melanochoris. Lark buntings are small songbirds. They have a with a short, thick, kind of bluey, kind of colored bill. The males have an are the ones that have all the color, being all black with a large white patch on the upper part of the wing. Females tend to be grayish brown with white stripes. They tend to uh, be about five and a half to seven inches long and weigh up to one and a half ounces. Their wingspans from wingtip to wingtip can be anywhere from uh, almost 10 inches to 11 inches. The lark bunting was made the state bird of Colorado in 1931. The state flower of Colorado is the Aquilegia corulea, which is sometimes called the Rocky Mountain Columbine or the Colorado Blue Columbine. It is a perennial plant found at elevations of 6,900 feet to 12,000 12, feet. Uh, it can grow roughly 8 to 24 inches tall with flowers that are that can be anywhere from pale blue to white, pale yellow and pink, or a mixture of any of those. They have five petals, five sepals, there are five long spurs that hang below the 
that hang below the calyx and contain nectar at their tips, which is accessible only to hawk moths, which are one of the main pollinators of this, of this plant. Others include bumblebees, solitary bees, and cyphrid flies. And now we move on to facts and stories about Colorado, starting with a very, very famous hotel, the Stanley Hotel. Those of you who are uh, horror aficionados or just Stephen King fans might recognize this place. This is the Overlook, or I should say, this is the hotel that inspired the Overlook. This is the Stanley Hotel. Stephen King did stay here at one point in time in room 217, which is said to be one of the most haunted rooms in the hotel. This was also a filming location for the 1997 TV miniseries, not the Kubrick film. The Stanley Hotel is a 142-room Colonial Revival Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado, and is about five miles from the entrance to Rocky Mountain National Park. It was built by Freeland Oscar Stanley of Stanley Steamer fame and opened on July 4, 1909 as a resort for upper-class Easterners and a health retreat for sufferers of pulmonary tuberculosis. At the time, one of the treatments for pulmonary tuberculosis was fresh air, fresh dry air with sunlight and a hearty diet, which pretty much describes Colorado. Now this next bit was suggested to me by one of the people who works here at the library who lived in Colorado for a time. That is, Colorado has a ton of hot springs. Many of these hot springs, um, come. the water comes from a geothermal spring, which is uh, produced by the emergence of geothermally heated groundwater that rises up from the Earth's crust. Many of these places, from my research, are not actually natural springs. These are pools that have been made by man, and then the, they are filled with water that is tapped from a geothermal spring. And there are a lot of them. And when I say a lot, one of the numbers that I found that keeps on popping up, 29. 29 hot springs. One of those happens to be hot sulfur springs, which I have been told does smell like rotten eggs because of the high sulfur content. Some people believe that bathing in these mineral-rich waters can uh, help with a certain diseases like skin diseases and other things and yes there are some uh, springs where clothing is optional but these are always marked and if you decide to go to Colorado and check out these springs just make sure you're checking the checking out whether it's clothing optional or not and for our final factoid story this is Colfax Avenue it is the longest commercial district street, topping out at 26.5 miles in the U.S. It has a rather uh, sordid history, with uh, according to some according to legend, uh, Playboy magazine once called Colfax the longest, wickedest street in America, but no one's ever been able to find the exact uh, magazine article that said that. However, looking at that, the, the activities that uh, Playboy would be talking about only happens within a very, very short stretch of the uh, Colfax Avenue. Now, there are some very important historical landmarks that are along Colfax Avenue. Things like the Denver Mint, the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, uh, the Civic Center Historic District, and Ogden Theater. These are just some uh, some examples of things that places that you could find along Colfax Avenue. And in, in the 1990s, the late 1990s, the entirety of Colfax Avenue was des designated a Colorado Heritage Corridor by the state government. Okay, folks, this is where we go from the facts to the authors. As usual, my uh, 
requirements for being on this list are you were born in, you were raised in, or you spent a significant amount of time in the state of Colorado. Now, again, this is not a complete list of all of the novelists. In fact, any writer of any of the writers that come from California. This is just a very, very, very small selection. Tell us down below in the comments who your favorite Colorado author is. Or, if you want to, what's your favorite book that's set in Colorado? As a reminder, all of these uh, books that are featured can be uh, checked out at the Clinton Public Library or off of our uh, e-library via Overdrive or the app Libby. So here we go! <music> our video for today. Thanks for watching. Um, remember to like and subscribe so that you can and don't forget to hit the bell too so that you can get notice whenever we add a new uh, video to our YouTube channel. Also check out our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram if you want to keep up with more stuff that's going on at the Clinton Public Library. Next week our state feature will be Connecticut. Thank you all and have a nice day.